Joining us now first on CNBC is Colorado's Attorney General, Phil Weiser. Colorado is one of those eight states joining the Department of Justice in its lawsuit against Google. Mr. Attorney General, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Great to be with you, Sarah. So why, why as the AG of Colorado, are you joining this suit by the Department of Justice? The bottom line for consumers are when you look for content on the web, often you're now being asked to pay for that content because the advertising costs aren't actually always going to the publisher. In many cases, Google is siphoning off these extra fees, 35 cents for every advertising dollar Google's able to capture because they've monopolized this market. They've got a dominant share on the publisher side, on the advertiser side, and in the auction in the middle. This hits consumers in the pocketbook by having to pay for content where otherwise advertising could help pick up some of that cost, not to mention undermining innovation in this market. Whenever you get a monopoly, it squelches innovation by controlling how the market works. The internet can be and should be an open platform for innovation. Because of Google's conduct here, it's not. It's not exactly a monopoly, though, is it, Mr. Attorney General? When, you, when you're talking about the ad tech market, they definitely have a large share, what, 30 percent or so, according to eMarketer? E That's not – there are other big players in there. What we're talking about here is a certain segment. If you're a publisher and you have content that you want to have ads, you have to go to ask, can I get ads filled on my website? And then if you're an advertiser and you want to place ads, you have to have tools to get access to getting it placed. So within this segment of placed ads, Google has dominance both on the publisher side and on the advertiser side. They've maintained dominance by acquiring companies and by adopting policies and squelching threats, all in violation of the antitrust laws. Microsoft also, though, has been growing in this ad tech space and, in fact, made an acquisition of, of Xander. Why, why didn't you object when that happened? When you have a firm like Google that has dominant market shares, it's important to bring out the microscope, to look closely at what's driving that dominance. Is it innovation, competition on the merits, or is it anti-competitive tactics? To the extent upstarts can find their way into marketplaces, that's good for consumers. To the extent you get dominant firms like Google, who can undermine would-be rivals, often at their you know, considerable expense, that's not good for consumers, that's not good for competition. Well, but speaking of competition, you know, we, we've seen some of the other players, yes, they're big, but they're growing. CNBC's reported that Amazon's ad business has been growing faster than Alphabet's and Meta's. Doesn't that show that there is competition? What's really important in antitrust law is to define the market. What is the relevant market? When you have Meta offering ads on its platform, that's really distinct from a publisher, the New York Times, for example, who wants ads on its website. And those publishers need these ad tools. And insofar as Google has monopolized the ad tools or the ad tech market, that's harm competition and that hurts consumers. So what ultimately do you want to see happen here? So the relief that we're going to be seeking is to restore competition to the marketplace, to address the harms that have come from Google's conduct, and to open up this marketplace to competition so consumers can benefit. Obviously, this is the first step of a process. A complaint was filed today with the Department of Justice, several states, including Colorado. We know we need to prove up our complaints, and we'll do that. In fact, this is one of three actions we have against Google, both this one involving ad tech tools, another one involving how they charge for apps, and a third one involving its dominance in search and search advertising. You know, the European Commission has done this. Margaret Vestier <laughs> is several years ahead of the U.S. regulators on, on these types of competition rules, especially as suits against Google. And they've resulted in mostly some fines, some, some court battles, not a ton in the way of change in behavior. How do you get around that? In the United States, and as a you, as attorney general for the state of Colorado, we're committed to changing behavior in the marketplace. That's why, in the cases I mentioned, it's not only about money where appropriate, but it's really about how do we change behavior sure. by having a court put in place protections to enable competition, to end practices that are exclusionary, and even structural relief to ensure that the market can be restored and that acquisitions that were 
done and had the effect of undermining fair competition can even be undone. You, you want to see the ad tech business broken up. I, I get it. I mean, what about the argument that, that Google is making, as Eamon reported, that this, this suit really largely duplicates a suit that was brought on by the Texas AG a few years ago that was largely dismissed? We can debate exactly what that district court decision held, but I will say a number of the claims in that are going forward. I also would note this suit is the product of considerable amount of work. For those who can read the complaint, it's obviously 150-something pages. It documents a range of actions by Google that are not normal competition on the merits. They're done for the purpose and the effect of excluding rivals, from making it harder to provide alternative services. These are the sorts of actions that violate the antitrust laws, and we're confident that the court will ultimately see this for what it is and will want to take action to restore competition. Phil Weiser, thank you so much for joining me today to, to talk through this suit. Appreciate it. Thank you.